what in the world is the centenarian decathlon? I'm not talking about an actual competition among 100-year-olds, although similar events do already exist. The National Senior Games, held every other year, brings together remarkable older athletes, some of them in their 90s and beyond. The record for the 100-meter dash for women, ages 100 and up, is about 41 seconds. The Centenarian Decathlon is a framework I use to organize my patients' physical aspirations for the later decades of their lives, especially their marginal decade. I know it's a somewhat morbid topic, thinking about our own physical decline, but not thinking about it won't make it any less inevitable. Think of the Centenarian Decathlon as the 10 most important physical tasks that you will want to be able to do for the rest of your life. Some of the items on the list resemble actual athletic events, while others are closer to activities of daily living. And still others might reflect your own personal interests. I find it useful because it helps us visualize with great precision exactly what kind of fitness we need to build and maintain as we get older. It creates a template for our training. I start by presenting my patients with a long list of physical tasks that might include some of the following. 1. Hike 1.5 miles on a hilly trail. 2. Get up off the floor under your own power using a maximum of one arm for support. 3. Pick up a young child from the floor. 4. Carry two five-pound bags of groceries for five blocks. 5. Lift a 20-pound suitcase into the overhead compartment of a plane. 6. Balance on one leg for 30 seconds, eyes open. Bonus points, eyes closed for 15 seconds. 7. Have sex. 8. Climb four flights of stairs in three minutes. 9. Open a new jar. 10. Do 30 consecutive jump rope skips. The full list is much longer, with more than 50 different items, but you get the idea. Once they've read it, I ask them to please select which of these tasks they want to be able to perform in their ninth, or better yet, tenth decade. Which ones do they choose? All of them, typically. They want to be able to hike a mile and a half, or carry their own groceries, or pick up a great-grandchild, or get up if they fall down, or play 18 holes of golf, or open a jar, or fly somewhere on a plane. Of course they do. That's great, I say. You'll make that kid's day when you pick her up like that. But now let's do a little math. Let's say the kid weighs 25 or 30 pounds. That's basically the same as doing a squat while holding a 30-pound dumbbell in front of you. That is a goblet squat. Can you do that now at age 40? Most likely. But now let's look into the future. Over the next 30 or 40 years, your muscle strength will decline by about 8 to 17% per decade, accelerating as time goes on. So if you want to pick up that 30-pound grandkid or great-grandkid when you're 80, you're going to have to be able to lift about 50 to 55 pounds now without hurting yourself. Can you do that? I press the issue. You also want to be able to hike on a hilly trail? To do that comfortably requires a VO2 max of roughly 30 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Let's take a look at the results of your latest VO2 max test. And guess what? You only scored a 30, your average for your age. But I'm afraid that's not good enough, because your VO2 max is also going to decline. So we're going to have to go ahead and cross that hike off your list. You can pull it off now, but you likely won't be able to do it when you're older. On it goes. To lift that 20-pound suitcase overhead when you're older means doing so with 40 or 50 pounds now. To be able to climb four flights of stairs in your 80s means you should be able to pretty much sprint up those same stairs today. In every case, you need to be doing much more now to armor yourself against the natural and precipitous decline in strength and aerobic capacity that you will undergo as you age. Eventually, my patients get it. Together, we come up with a list of 10 or 15 events in their personal centenarian decathlon representing their goals for their later decades. This then determines how they should be training. The beauty of the Centenarian Decathlon 
is that it is broad yet unique to each individual. Nor is it limited to 10 events. For most people, it ends up being more, depending on their goals. My version of the centenarian decathlon is tailored to my own particular interests, such as swimming and archery. It's also fairly aggressive, I admit, reflecting the importance of a high level of fitness in my life. So I would probably add in some of the following events. Number 11, swim half a mile in 20 minutes. 12, walk with a 30-pound dumbbell in each hand for one minute. 13, draw back and fire a 50-pound compound bow. 14, do five pull-ups. 15. Climb 90 steps in 2 minutes. This requires a VO2 max of 32. 16. Dead hang for 1 minute. 17. Drive a race car within 5 to 8% of the pace I can do so today. This one is actually inspired by Paul Newman. 18. Hike with a 20-pound backpack for an hour. 19. Always carry my own luggage. 20. Walk up a steep hill. In the end, most people's centenarian decathlons will probably overlap to a degree. Someone who enjoys stand-up paddleboarding, for example, would perhaps choose events focused around building core and cross-body strength, but she will likely be training the same muscle groups as I am doing for archery and maintaining a similar degree of stamina and balance. The centenarian decathlon is ambitious, no question, a 90-year-old who is even able to board a plane under her own power, let alone hoist a carry-on bag, is doing extremely well. But there is a method to the madness. These individual tasks are not out of reach. There are octogenarians, nonagenarians, and even centenarians right now who are running marathons, racing bicycles, lifting weights, flying airplanes, jumping out of airplanes, skiing the Rocky Mountains, competing in actual decathlons, and doing all sorts of other amazing things. So all of these events are within the realm of possibility. One purpose of the Centenarian Decathlon, in fact, is to help us redefine what is possible in our later years and wipe away the default assumption that most people will be weak and incapable at that point in their lives. We need to abolish that decrepit stereotype and create a new narrative perhaps modeled after the old-school fitness guru, Jack LaLanne, who kept doing his usual rigorous daily workout right up until his death at age 96. Unlike most very long-lived individuals, he didn't just get there by accident or luck. He built and maintained a high level of fitness throughout his life, beginning in the 1930s, when very few people exercised regularly and fitness centers did not yet exist. As he got older, he set out very deliberately to defy the stereotype of aging as a period of misery and decline. He did the work, and he succeeded, giving us a glimpse of what an older person is truly capable of achieving. If we are to follow in Lelaine's footsteps, we must stop pointlessly exercising just because we think we are supposed to, banging away on the elliptical trainer at lunch hour. I promise you can do better. I suggest you join me and start training with a very specific purpose, which is to be kick-ass 100-year-olds. When my patients say they are more interested in being kick-ass 50-year-olds than centenarian decathletes, I reply that there is no better way to make that happen than to set a trajectory toward being vibrant at 100 or 90 or 80. Just as an archer who trains at 100 yards will be more accurate at 50. By fixing our aim on the centenarian decathlon, we can make every decade between now and then better as well. With the centenarian decathlon as my goal, I now work out with the focus that I once directed exclusively towards cycling, swimming, or boxing. It's not about being great at any one pursuit, but about being pretty good at just about everything. As centenarian decathletes, we are no longer training for a specific event, but to become a different sort of athlete altogether, an athlete of life.